Can I get a motion to resume open session? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, can I get a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from the July 30th open and closed session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Board involvement, who would like to go first? Oh, oh, yeah. Yes, please. Review the closed session agenda items. Thank you, Ms. Bent. You're welcome. <laughs> Proceeding to the General Provisions Articles 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County met in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction, and any other personal matter that affects one or more specific individuals, and to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. Thank you. There's no volume There's no speakers. We can try to talk louder if that helps. We can put our teacher voices on. There's no volume in here. The volume's only in here. Okay, we can turn the AC units off. We can turn the AC units off, but it's gonna get really hot really fast. Because it's already really hot up here. <laughs> that air is out there. So, okay. Yes, we'll put our teacher voices on. Go. Board involvement, who would like to speak first? Anybody? I just wanna say, even though we've, um, there's been we've been getting the emails about awards even though the summer's going on we're still winning a lot of things yes. uh, our yes. students which is awesome yes um, we've just been enjoying the summer and i hope everybody else has been very excited about starting a new school year anybody else? so anyone else yeah, i'd just like to put a pitch out for the county fair next week mm -hmm. uh it's a big thing in our county and there's a lot of students and our teachers out there it's a it's a fun thing to go to so i recommend everybody has a chance to get out there get out there all right Looking forward to a new year and a new uh, theater season. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? All right, Dr. Salins. Yes, um, actually I have a prepared statement that I'd like to read in light of everything that has been going on because there appears to be a little bit of some misinformation out in our school community. In February, I presented three budgets to the board. At that time, the board consensus was to pursue option B in the amount of $9.7 million over the 2024 school year. That budget was developed to meet the needs of the district for the upcoming year. The budget did not include any grant positions through Maryland Leeds or Essers that expire actually September next month. The commissioners initially provided us, in response to that, a budget of $5 million over what was provided the year before. Subsequently, after the commissioners' community budget hearings, they provided us with an additional $1.2 million. And although that was helpful, it still was not enough. And we plan to use attrition to balance the rest of the budget. I'm sure everyone can remember, we started at $5.3 million in shortfall that equates to about 53 positions. After the additional funds of 1.2 million, this left the shortfall at 4.1 million that equates to about 41 positions. We had a total of 22 resignations and 17 retirements, which is 39 in attrition. However, it's important to note that 19 of those positions were filled with our very own staff. For example, if we had a fourth grade teacher who retired, we did not rehire a new staff member outside of the district, but instead we filled that position with a staff member whose position had been eliminated for the upcoming school year. This resulted in an attrition rate much, much lower than the five previous years. As a result of that lack of attrition, we still have a current short shortfall of just over $2 million. In an effort to balance the budget, we met with all bargaining units to discuss furlough days. These proposed days purposely do not impact student days. The proposed furlough days would be for all employee units, including the superintendent and all administrative staff. We would continue to work collaboratively with 
the different association units to resolve this budget shortfall. But I ask that our community not assume negative intentions and that we promote a respectful environment, which I believe we have done. With that said, there has been a lot of discussion last school year through our school community, especially last spring about class sizes. As of today, the average class size for K-5 is 22.4, which is the same as last year. And we have interviewed and successfully hired reading and math specialists that will be supporting our students and our teachers in the classroom. In addition, and lastly, I want you to please remember that all capital funds, they're completely separate from our operating budget funds. And therefore, the funds that have been allocated by our county for the central office cannot be used to fill this shortfall. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Citizen participation. There are two. We ask that all speakers keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Statements to the board should re relate to a matter of general policy over which this board has authority. Comments about the actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have a specific question, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you show respect for all. First up, Cecilia Mitchell. Um, so that I don't fall over, my board is going to come up with me. Thank you. Um, I'm Cecilia Mitchell. I'm the president of QACEA. I um, appreciate Dr. Salen's um, comments, and clearly you read our email for yes. earlier today. Yes. Um, I'm going to continue. Sorry, could you with... speak up just a little oh, bit? Yeah. I'm having trouble. I'll turn on my teacher voice. Thank um, you. I forgot what I was saying. You read our email. I'm going to continue just, with my statement. Just got it when I walked in. To, yeah, so we have did a reset the form, time so. for me. Here we go. All right. <laughs> it is the Board of Education's statutory obligation to develop and submit a budget to the county for the necessary funds to operate and provide a quality and equal educational opportunity for all children in the county, as noted in Section 4108 of the Education Article. Based upon the Board's submission, it is then the Commissioner's responsibility to levy and collect taxes on property to produce the amounts necessary to meet the appropriations made in the approved annual budget of the county board. The administration, along with the Board of Education, failed their budgetary responsibilities in managing and estimating appropriations necessary to operate the system of public schools in this county. I am here tonight as a union advocate for the hundreds of employees who are members of QACA and your employees. Although the board's sh funding shortfall is the result, although the board's funding shortfall is the result of the administration's erroneous assumptions in building its budget, employees are being asked to assume the burden to fix the administration's errors. It is incumbent on the board to exhaust all alternatives before moving toward extreme measures such as furloughs. I understand that you, the board, have not provided Dr. Salens with the directive to approach the commissioners with a supplemental budget request. I'm here tonight to say untie her hands. Fulfill your responsibility to provide a quality education and equal ed educational opportunity for all children in the county. Return to the commissioners with a supplemental request. I am deeply sympathetic to the superintendent's difficult position. We meet regularly throughout the year and exhaustively in the past few weeks. Our exchanges are candid and frankly quite lively. We work together to promote Everside as a unique service for employees and means to save on health care costs. We partnered up recently to ask the commissioners for additional funding. We stand ready tonight, you see them, we stand ready to do the same again to prevent the transfer of this budget crisis to these employees. Untie her hands. Ask for the additional funding. We will not entertain furlough, furlough days without an all-out effort to eliminate them, including combing through the budget to sketch out real reductions, something we began yesterday. 
Um, so let's just put these difficulties on the table, work them out together, and untie her hands. We recognize the urgency of this crisis. Let us work together, employees, the Board of Education, commissioners, to examine all options. So thank you, Dr. Salen. Thank you. Thank you. Raven Bishop. Raven Bishop, Church Hill. I'm here today as a parent of a Queen Anne's County Public School student. And I'm here to voice support for our teachers and also to get in the weeds a little bit about the impact of furloughs on a classroom teacher. I'm particularly concerned about furloughs should they happen at the beginning of the school year because those preparation days at the beginning of the school year are critical to student success. To eliminate days at the beginning of the school year would mean that teachers would be placed in the untenable position of having to either be underprepared for students to return to school or to provide free labor to this school system. In addition to the free labor, let's be real, that they're already going to give in preparing for the beginning of the school year in their homes and that they're already giving right now as they prepare on their own time. I would urge this board if furloughs should happen, that they happen at times when it's less critical to teacher preparation. The beginning of the school year is not that time. The beginning of a marking period is not that time. Uh, testing windows are not that time. Add an extra day to the holidays, but don't take away the beginning of the school year. That time is critical in preparing for students. Uh, furthermore, I feel like as a parent, our community deserves a greater level of transparency about what's going on and how these things impact our teachers. It shouldn't be just a few weeks before school that we're just finding out about this. I think more community members would be ready to stand up and support this board in going after more MOE funding if we knew what was going on. So I'd like a greater level of transparency. Thank you. Thank you. Skylar Grimes. Good morning, or good evening, actually. Um, so I am a resident of Queenstown. I am a substitute teacher, and I'm alumni of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. So today I wanted to first thank you guys for coming here, and I know this is a difficult task for all of you, and I want to recognize that. but. And I know you know the quality job our teachers do, and they are amazing. I see it every single day, and I see it in more than one school. But we have to do something. So these teachers that we have behind us and that are joining us this school year, they have taken on the exceptional difficulty of having less support, of having possibly larger class sizes, and they've taken it on and are ready to go. They did not plan to have less time to prepare at the end of the school year. At the end of the school year, they thought they would have these extra days to prepare their classrooms, their lessons, to get the professional development they need to support our students. And let's be honest, you know, it's all about money and everything, but this is going to impact our students. It isn't going to, um, it's going to affect people's financial, but it's going to affect our students. And I know that's why we're all here. I know that's why you guys are members of these boards. I know why these faculty report every day to raise our next generation strong. So I wanna um, tad off another speaker. Let's look at some transparency. More eyes on it, the better. We can get more ideas, we can collaborate. But if we do this a few weeks before the school year, our options are limited. So. I wanna say moving forward, we should have more transparency and let our teachers know what they're working with so they can do the best that they can because we have an amazing staff, we have amazing kids and we have an amazing county and I know we can do it. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. That is it. Okay, all right, well thank you very much for taking your time, all right. The HR report, can I get a motion to accept it as presented? Make a motion to uh, approve HR report as looked at and reviewed earlier. Second. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next call was for a break. Do we want a break or move on? Keep going. All right, Mr. Kintop. Okay. Uh, good, good evening, President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members and executive team. Uh, I'm Kevin Kintop. I'm the program director for Rise Academy, and I'm here tonight to offer you uh, an update on the summer programs that just concluded last week with the school system. Um, first, I want to say thank you for not choosing to turn the air conditioning off because <laughs> I am already sweating. And it was a nice touch uh -huh. that the napkins have snowflakes on them. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but that was, that was a nice touch tonight. So. You're <laughs> All right, so as I said, um, the purpose of me being here is I want to talk to you about the different programs that we did run this year, um, the students that we had involved in those programs, and then the goal of each program, what we're uh, hoping to accomplish. The four programs we ran this year were our Title I academic extension programs that occurred in the four Title I schools, which are Southersville Elementary, Graysonville Elementary, Churchill Elementary, and Southersville Middle School. We had our extended school year program, which provides support for students with special educational needs. Um, that was done in all of our schools, and you'll hear a little bit more about that as an itinerant program, plus we had one on site at Centerville Middle. Um, we had our high school recovery program, which we have every summer, um, which was helping students recoup credits to get back on pace for graduation. And then we had our migrant education program, which was actually a, an 11th hour program. We were very lucky to pull some funding from the state um, and provide some, some support for our migrant uh, migratory students. Thank you, Dr. Guido. Yes. What's that? Thank you, Dr. Yeah, Guido. Thank you, absolutely. I, and I have thank yous on the end for this, but yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Guido. Um, so as I said, we had our four schools um, that were participating. You can see the numbers here. We had uh, approximately 200 students that were involved in the elementary and middle Title I program at those four schools. Um, all of our programs ran for four weeks this year, uh, which was July 8th through August 1st. We did a Monday through Thursday. Um, all of the Title I programs were a three-hour program, 9 a.m. to uh, to 12 p.m. Uh, this year, uh, the curriculum used was bought from Scholastic. Um, we we changed and brought in a little bit more, a um, little more oomph to the, to the program um, through the Title I funding. Um, it included all the materials pre and post assessments uh, for reading and math. Um, it also it, it had a, some database stuff with it too, which we're going to be able to have access to. Um, while kids were in school, not only did they do reading and math, but there were STEAM activities that they were a part of. And we did have some electives, unified arts for students. So they weren't just sitting working on reading and math. They were up, they were doing things. Um, made it a little bit more fun for those kids coming in the summer. The instruction included consumable workbooks, hands-on activities, manipulatives. It was a nice program that we were able to pull from Scholastic for the Title I program. For extended school year and our special uh, our students with special education needs, we served 187 students over the four week period. Um, they were given uh, help in addressing areas of reading, writing, mathematics, behavior, executive functioning, and social emotional skills. As I said, um, they were all over the county. It was an itinerant uh, a thing where the students would meet the teacher at the school at a certain time to work on their goals. Um, we did include the um, ESY in both Graysonville and Sudlersville Middle's Title I program. So when the kids were there working, we also had the ESY. They could be part of both programs and still get their ESY assistance. Um, we did have the Centerville Middle School, they did the PAX summer program there, which was, was wonderful for them to have the opportunity to have that daily interaction uh, work there. Um, the only exception in locations this summer was Mattapique Elementary, and that was due to the floor replacement that was going on there. It made it a little difficult to, to make that happen. The high school recovery program uh, this year had 131 students who did register uh, to take part in credit recovery. We know that there were over 200 credits that were attempted by students. I don't have the final numbers, so I don't want to give you a number of how many were gained, um, but it, it's going to be close to the number that was registered for. Um, we did have two sites this year. Both of the high schools um, had advocated to have it at their locations to make it easier for them to work with their students. Uh, so we had it at Kennellan High School. We couldn't do Queen Anne's because of their roof replacement, but they had it next door at Centerville Middle School. Um, 
We also did a different schedule this year for the high school, and that was we staggered each subject and we did full days for two week periods. And what that allowed us to do is um, a student could take two classes and it would not necessarily mean they'd have to split their day with both those classes every week. So kids were guaranteed a longer amount of time in a given week. So we didn't have every teacher there every day. We may have had English, uh, science and PE the first week and then the second week was English and math and foreign language and the next week was social studies and so, so it was a staggered th but it allowed students more options so they and financially it allowed us we needed to make some cutbacks in what we were doing it allowed us to meet those needs of students while still making those um, cutbacks um, next year we're going to be talking because we know we need to make continue to make adjustments on, on summer school credit recovery um, so that we have the most options for our students the fourth program was the Migrant Education Program. That one was a little bit different than the others, as it usually is. Um, they had the same dates as us, but they were from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Uh, as I said, they had a little bit of modified funding this year, so they used to be five days a week, and they used to have a little bit longer, but they were able to match our four days and do a longer program. They had 48 students involved at Southersville Elementary School for the program that were between the ages of 1 and 17. Um, and they did include three family nights in their program for reading, math, and a cultural showcase in that four-week period. Haven Ministries provided snacks, weekend food bags, and actually volunteered at some of their family nights to help support the migrant program. Um, and they did bring in and had the students had the opportunity to work with Chop Tank Health Music Therapy, the 4-H, and the University of Maryland Extension Office. So it was a very short period, a four-week period, but we did get a lot of things and we were able to hit a, a large number of students over the summer. Um, we had approximately 550 plus students who were able to take part in one of our, one of our programs, one of our opportunities. Um, as Dr. Salen said with Dr. Guider, there's a whole lot of folks behind the scenes that you may not see stand, sitting here um, that are involved. A, a huge thank you, food services, transportation. Um, both the high schools kind of had their assistant principals and academic teams running their programs. We had site coordinators at each location um, for the Title I programs and the migrant programs. There's just a lot of people involved with this, um, and I'm very grateful for all the work that they do to make that program go. Um, I will say, as I do every year when I present this information to you, that we will, before the end of the calendar year, start our preparation for next summer to start planning what we're doing. So as I'm wiping my brow with a snowflake napkin, we're gonna be um, preparing uh, for next year. Do you have any questions? Um, I just had uh, one, when you when we have the final, how many credit recoveries we get, could you also talk, you, they said they had the pre and, and post assessments. Could we maybe get a summary of those, like how much that affected the, the pre and post assessments? The pre and post assessments were aligned to the Title I elementary and middle school programs, because that's built into theirs. Not every credit recovery course has a pre and post test. Well, no, right, not the recovery, but when you talk okay. about the pre and post test in the other, in the summer school, if we could get those. Dr. Shrekin us just took over kind of okay. that program, so I'm sure once she's able to get that information, I can get you the pre and post, and I can definitely get you the uh, the credit recovery and credits that were earned and recovered. That's a lot of students. That was up for a short period of time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any yeah, other questions? I, I just give you a lot of credit because yeah. when, we, when you Correct. can get 200 credits brought you up through summer right. school and stuff, I mean that gets kids back on track yes, and gives them a does. chance. Because once they get behind, I think it's tough to catch up and this gives them a great opportunity to you know yeah, to, to get going and, and have a good thing so absolutely i appreciate what you do thank you thank you very much for your time all right citizen participation do we have any other public comment yeah, ma'am okay um so the future meeting the next one will be regular board meeting at september 4th and before we um get a motion to adjourn can i indulge some can we go back into closed session for a quick minute is everybody okay with that so i can get a motion to close open and go back into closed is that okay i would do just a, a a motion to amend the agenda this is just a i make a motion uh, amend the agenda to go back into closed session second okay. and then let's do a separate motion into closed and what the what's the topic um budget i guess it well, would still be budget uh, for, collective bargaining okay. collective bargaining okay all right is yes. that all right oh, yeah i'll take this a quick motion? minute to go back into close. Yeah, I think yeah. Take I make a motion to amend the agenda. I seconded that. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now make you a motion, to, now motion to go back into Correct. closed session. For the purpose of collective For the purpose bargaining. of uh, collective bargaining Correct. discussions. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, George.